Hey, how's it going? This is Grant Luna with Fidelity National Title. And in this video, I'll be showing you two easy ways to generate a seller's estimated remaining loan balance using Fidelity Agent 1 and Fidelity Passport. And the first case is a very simple case. Let's say that a seller only has one loan on the property and we can just find the estimated loan balance that way. The second case will be a situation where there's more than one loan on a property. So the first way is just using the Fidelity Agent 1. This is a phone and desktop app. If you don't have a Fidelity Agent 1 account, there's a link in the description for an easy to follow setup guide. You can have an account and then follow along with this video. So the first example is going to be a case where a seller only has one loan on a property. And so this makes it very easy to find an estimated remaining loan balance for a property. So what you can do is navigate to Fidelity Agent 1. I'm currently using the desktop version. The phone app will be somewhat similar in terms of how it works. Just the location of these buttons will be different. So instead, this will correlate to the bottom of your phone screen. So initially, it should put you into the buyer tab. But what we want to find is an estimated remaining seller loan balance so what we can select is seller at the top of the screen here and next it's pretty easy to actually find this so all you really need to do if there's just one loan on a property is select add address here now all you have to do is enter in the property address you'll see a drop down menu appear and all you have to do is select that address next what will appear is what's called home link and so what home link will do is it'll find that property address that you entered in you'll find the estimated annual property tax that these people are paying but on top of that if you select next so initially you see this estimated annual property tax i can select next and now what it has is for the same property the loans that are associated with that property so one of the shortcomings of fidelity agent one is that it can only find one loan on a property so if there's multiple you're not actually going to have the full picture. In this case, I'm just assuming there's just one loan. And what it will do is it'll say when that loan is recorded. So it says we also found a loan recorded in January 2014 for $75,000. So that's that original loan balance when they took out the loan, but we're looking for the estimated remaining loan balance. And so how you do that is by back calculating based off that interest rate that they were paying for that loan. So the nice thing is that it actually gives you the average interest rate at the time the loan was funded or created in the first place. And that way you can create a back calculation to find the estimated remaining loan balance. So right here it says the average interest rate was 4.165 for January 2014. So all I have to do is put this in. I'm just going to round it to 4.15 and hit compute. And based off the number, which was the original loan amount for 75,000 and then the interest rate of 4.15, which is an average, it's saying an estimated remaining loan balance for this property is $59,000. So all you have to do now is select use estimate. This is going to be in your net sheet right here. Here's that 59,000. All you have to do is simply enter in a sales price, whatever you think it is. I'll say 1.25 million dollars you can change these if you want i know a lot of areas it's five percent for the broker fee here you can enter in other costs if needed now all you have to do is select compute you'll be taken to something that looks like this and obviously within fidelity total farm all of these calculators can be made into templates really easily so all you really need to do now is select share or print pdf this will create a net sheet for you that you could just send to somebody directly from your phone. If you're on your phone or just email, download, whatever you want to do. And quick note, I'm realizing now this is in a different language. I had uh, changed this earlier, but it is a nice feature of Fidelity Agent 1. The fact that you can actually customize these net sheets or buyer monthly payment e estimates, most of what you create in this app. And you can change the language pretty easily. So I can just change it back to English or Korean, Polish, Russian, Chinese, etc. So I can choose English. This net sheet now will be translated back into English for me. Like I said, I have this menu over here where I can download this to my computer and email it or keep it. I can email it straight from here or from my phone. I can easily just share or text this. So a second example of how you can find an estimated remaining seller's loan balance is maybe a case where they have more than one loan. So what I recommend doing in that case is navigating to Fidelity Passport. If you don't have a Fidelity Passport account, there's also a link in the description for you to set up an account. And what I recommend you do if you're trying to find a property that has more than one loan is to create a property profile within this, specifically taking a look at the transaction history. So what you can do, and I won't go into the full deep dive of how you create property profiles, but once you have the property selected for the property profile you're generated, what you can do is uncheck pretty much everything that it's gonna give you in this property profile because mainly all you want to see is the transaction history here. So I'm gonna uncheck all of these just to save 
amount of information I have to go through. And so now in transaction history, I'm just going to select uh, transaction history here and quick view. Uh, I'm going to unselect a detailed view and select get now. So now this property profile will be generated for you. The main points of interest is taking a look at this transaction summary right here and paying attention to the loans. And so this basically works from the bottom up. So the oldest recorded documents for a property are at the bottom here and they work their way upwards. So the most recent documents that were recorded on a property are towards the top here. And what we want to pay attention to is the document description. So basically we're kind of doing some homework, doing some digging, and we're trying to find loans recorded on the property. So let's start at the very end just to show you a pretty basic example of how you can go about doing this. So this first one is a deed. It's not what we're looking for. And actually, I'm sorry, I misspoke. We want to pay attention to the document type. This is going to be really easy to find. So either we're going to have a mortgage, a deed, or a release of a mortgage. This is basically someone paying off a mortgage. So a mortgage that was previously recorded in a property no longer applies. So what we can do is start from the bottom. We'll look at these two. These are both deeds. So grand deed from when they originally purchased the property. That's not a loan. We're not interested in that. First, we found a loan here. So it's a mortgage from 2001 and we see a sales price loan amount here. So this loan amount from 2001 is for $76,000. So that's one loan that they, and currently as we're working through this list here, have open. Then we have another mortgage here in 2007 for $96,000. So initially it can seem like now they have two loans, one for $96,000 and one for $76,000. But if we keep moving up, we see a couple months afterwards in 2007, we see a release, which means a previous mortgage was likely paid off. We see this here, a release of mortgage. And how you can see which loan was paid off is to take a look at the amount here. This makes it pretty easy. So we see 76,000 was the amount of the loan that was paid off. And if we look down here, we see this loan amount also has a loan balance of 76,000, which means this is likely the loan that was paid off. This means that this is probably now the only loan that exists on this property. So $96,000 is their current total loan balance that they have. Obviously they could have paid some off over time. We'll keep working our way up. Now we're at number six right here from 2012. We see a new mortgage, a new conventional loan for $66,000. So now we have this one for 96, thousand dollars and this one for $66,000. But as we work our way up now to 2012, we see another release. So that means another previous loan has been paid off. This one is for $96,000, which means this was the loan that was paid off. So now the only loan that continues to exist on this property is this one from 2012 for $66,000. So we'll keep working our way up this chain right here. We see a deed, not a loan. Now in 2015, we see another mortgage that comes into the picture for $75,000. Keep working our way up and we see another release. So now release of mortgage, this one for $66,000. We'll work our way down the chain. We see this one here for $66,000 from 2012. So this one's likely been paid off by this new loan here. So now the only estimated loan open in 2015 is this one for $75,000. We'll keep working our way back up. We see 2018 here, a new mortgage comes into the picture. This is a credit line, so not a traditional loan. This one is for $100,000. This is the end of the chain here. So now we can basically assume as best as we can that the estimated remaining loans on the property are a traditional mortgage here for $75,000 and a credit line here for $100,000. So total loan amount of $175,000. I'm just for the sake of this example going to assume that this credit line, or I'm going to make believe that it's just a traditional mortgage, just because credit lines could be a little bit different. Maybe their terms are a little bit shorter, or uh, maybe the amount they've paid down isn't as consistent over time. So I'm just going to say it's a traditional mortgage just for the sake of this example. So I'm going to say we have this $100,000 loan from 2018, and then this $75,000 loan from 2015. These are the only loans in this chain of title that don't show a release. So I'm assuming that these loans are still associated with the property. So what I can do to find the estimated remaining loan balance is navigate back to Fidelity Agent 1 and select calculators up at the top of the page here. So what I can do is select this loan balance calculator down here. Uh, And then what I can do, because initially it's going to be set on original home price and down payment to try to calculate it, but we can select options and then choose loan amount instead. So this is basically to take in what the original loan amount was and the interest rate and then the origination of that loan and then show you the estimated remaining loan balance. 
So let's start with this one here. So uh, basically we'll do this $75,000 mortgage from 2015. So we'll start with that one first. So what we can do is take this into account. So it was $75,000 for that original loan amount. And then interest rate, what's really nice is all you have to do is select this uh, toggle menu here. The loan is from 2015, so I'm gonna click this toggle. Now I can move this over to 2015 and it's saying the average interest rate at the time was 3.84. You can select whether you want the high or the low, but it's defaulted to average and you can just use. So now it's gonna say the loan start date was in 2015. If you wanted, you can make that date precise because you have the dates here on the property profile. Okay, so now all you have to do is select compute. This is gonna give you an estimated remaining loan balance on this loan. So this is roughly 60,000. I'm just gonna remember 60,000 for the sake of the example. Now let's move our way back to the property profile where the other loan was a mortgage in 2018 for 100,000. We're just making believe that it's a mortgage, not a credit line. So we'll say $100,000 and now go to interest rate. And now I'm just toggle this to 2018, 4.445 was the average. We'll use that in our estimate, select compute. And now we have 89,000. So 89,000, let's do some quick math. So say 89, uh, whoops, 89,000 plus and go 60,000. So $149,000 remaining on that loan. So now all you have to do really is create a seller net sheet. So you can come in here, maybe create a, uh, a sales price for the person you have a listing presentation with. You can change this broker fee to five if that's what's standard in your market area. And now all you have to do is come down to this seller loan balance here, enter 149,000. That's just the rough estimate. I didn't do exact numbers here and select compute. And now you can have a net at close amount. And all you have to do now is select share or print PDF. This is gonna be a nice net sheet for you. They can easily just share email, download, print, or share via text message on your phone. So this was two ways that you can generate an estimated remaining seller's loan balance, largely using Fidelity Agent One and then leaning into Fidelity Passport for a little bit of a deep dive into property history. If any of this was confusing, leave a comment under the video below. I'd be happy to help answer any way that I can. If there's anything else you're looking to add to your real estate business moving forward this year, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my phone number is 310-480-1085 and my email is grantlunafidelity at gmail.com. Feel free to like and subscribe as well. I constantly release videos trying to find ways to help you grow your business this year and beyond.